Part 2, The First Month This was originally 14 days, but I accidentally deleted the footage. I had to do it all over again and use the mod Prepare Carefully to mimic the original game setup as much as possible. There are small differences in my ideology, such as ranged weapons are looked down upon, but for the most part, it's the same. Anyways, let's get started. Day 1. You just crash landed on a foreign planet, and the first thing to do is hit the pause button and scout the map. When I look for a place to call home, I consider the following in order of importance. 1. Proximity to the center. This gives you more time to react to threats. 2. Pre-existing structures. They make early game base building significantly easier. 3. Rich soil. This speeds up your important crops. 4. Steam geysers. They can act as power and a heat source. 5. Choke points for defense. And 6. Proximity to ores and minerals. I chose the area I did because it is central, has good pre-existing structures, and is close to a small patch of rich soil. Once we have chosen a suitable area to build, get shelter up ASAP. Let's turn some of these ruins into bedrooms as they already have their own walls and flooring for the most part. Next, get your stockpile set up nearby so everyone has something to do when you unpause. For growing areas, consider your best cooking and growing skill. I have no good cook for this playthrough currently, so I will grow corn on the rich soil and strawberries on the poor soil. This means that I can eat strawberries in the meantime and not need to worry about cooking for now. Contrary to new players' beliefs, you can entirely skip rice on temperate forest. There is tons of forageable food and animals to hunt. The last thing to do on the first day is to place a hoopstone ring for entertainment and a table and chairs in your stockpile for eating. For the rest of the month, we will focus on stabilizing our colony's moods and needs. Growing cotton and smoke leaf are the next two crops to go for. Remember that our ideology is drug related, so having smoke leaf is necessary for early game drug needs and will also stabilize mood. Cotton is also necessary as we need to build clothing to prevent heat stroke and hypothermia. In this case, we will definitely need clothing to prevent heat stroke. We can also sell smoke leaf joints for a silver source. Stone cutting is our next priority. We want a fireproof, nice looking shelter. The less stuff we build with wood now, the less we need to replace later on. Follow this up with a research bench if you have any pressing things you want to learn or you have a colonist that always has extra time on their hands. After this, we have power. Power is needed for so many things. When you have an abundance of wood, a wood field generator is a great choice. It is my only choice here as I have low construction skill. It generates enough power for a freezer, a few lights, and a workbench or two. Make sure to light all your indoor areas where colonists consistently walk around or work at. Work speed is reduced significantly in the dark. This is more of a preference, but getting a prisoner cell up right away means that you already collect prisoners and slaves when the first raids hit. Do not worry about the early game raids on Adventure Story difficulty. If you chose two colonists that are half decent at melee, they can almost always win the fights, even when barehanded. If you use blunt weapons to take down enemies, you can capture them after and turn them into cheap workforce or sell them to traders for silver. A perimeter wall is necessary to prevent headache from manhunting animals. If all your colonists just survived a raid and a manhunting boomalope comes knocking, you will be glad to have this barrier between you and the wild. It also acts to keep your tamed animals from being hunted. Make sure to travel to trade. Even early game, it can be very lucrative. I had two people crash onto my planet unable to walk, which made them useless. I could wait the 30 days for them to recover, but that is currently a waste of resources. Instead, I sent out one of my colonists to a nearby settlement to sell them. You don't need good food for early game caravans, just bring some berries along and you will be fine. A sleeping bag is also a good idea, but not necessary for small trips. I had a trader come by and a group of ducks joined near the same time. They also had some animals to sell. When I buy animals, I usually only buy them if they produce a product and can buy male and females. This allows you to supplement your diet and eat the excess offspring. Some animals like cats and dogs have a different usage where they give a nuzzle bonus twice or so a day which increases colonist mood. Other animals also can be used for hauling or increase your movement speed on the map. You need a pen for unintelligent animals ASAP or they will wander off the map. I was caught in a pinch in this case, so I quickly made a small pen and then expanded it to the size I needed after. Don't let your animals wander. Make a tiny temporary pen at the very least and expand it as you go. Now we finish one month with a stable food source, crops for making clothes and drugs with, a workshop, a storage area, animal pens, and a prisoner jail. In the next five days, we finished up our freezer and kitchen, 
enslaved our prisoner, and completed our perimeter wall. This colony is fully stabilized and ready to develop more artisan goods now. Researching smithing and machining would allow the production of higher-end weapons. You could also research drug production to become a rich addict society, or microelectronics to develop into bionic humans. The possibilities are endless. The beauty of this game is there are a million different ways to play it. If you found this guide useful, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, and good luck on the rim.